السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين متابعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Welcome to our third session of Ramadan Fiqh Bits um, As every single session inshallah we would like to start with the definition of fasting so it can help us kind of remind ourselves where we stopped off but it also gives us a nice breakdown of where we are and where we're headed inshallah uh, with these sessions. So the definition once again of fasting on Ramadan is to intentionally refrain from specific things during a specific time by a specific person. Uh, so far we alhamdulillah we had covered the uh, intentions, uh, we had covered the time that I'm talking about fasting whether it's how we determine Ramadan or the period where we fast from and then we also dived into uh, the specific individual who's supposed to fast. Last time alhamdulillah we had finished who is obligated for them to fast and we went into some of the conditions uh, today, inshallah, we're going to be talking about who is excused from fasting. Uh, but before that, I'm just going to go back to the last uh, slide that we were left off. And we were talking about who's obligated, to fa who's obligated to fast. And we said this is the Muslim, the sane person who's an adult and who's able to fast. The reason I'm bringing this is because where we stopped at is that this ability of fast is our gateway uh, for those who are excused from fasting. Now, the reason I'm stressing on this is because there are situations where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a concession uh, for those who are able to fast but still break their fast. Those are concessions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have to do not necessarily with the ability but perhaps the difficulty that people might face uh, in their fast and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given the concession uh, to fast. But that being said, uh, I'm going to over here, we're going to talk about inshallah today, those who are excused from fasting. And I divided them into two categories. Those who are capable of fasting, uh, but they have a concession to fast. And those who are incapable of fasting. I'm going to expand this over here inshallah uh, to uh, the slide. And we're going to address inshallah the first who are those incapable of fasting. Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them permission not to fast. It's no longer obligatory upon them. Uh, and so those are the people who are incapable of fasting due to old age. Uh, they become very frail, very fatigued. They're unable to fast. And those who are terminally ill, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, give shifa to all of those who are ill, whether terminal or non-terminal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this a source of cleansing their sins. Amen. But for those specific two categories, they're actually not, uh, there's a concession for them to fast. And when they break their fast, they're not obligated to make it up. But rather what they need to do is they need to feed a poor person for every day that they break their fast. Um, and so over here, I kind of put in the slide that those individuals, they break their fast, uh, but they're also not obligated to make up that fast because they are either terminally ill or of old age. And the reason behind it is that this is something that is continuous. And so it makes no sense to ask them to make it up when they're unable to do it in the first place. And so in, in place of them trying to make it up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made it obligatory for them to perform a fidya, to give a fidya, which is, uh, I guess, can be roughly described as a ransoming uh, for the day they did not fast. Um, and this is by feeding a poor person for every single day that they did not fast. What should they feed them? Well, it's sufficient to feed them from the categories of zakah. And in this case, they would feed them a mud of Bur, a mud, which is, means like a full palm length of bur. Bur over here is, is wheat. Uh, or a half a saw. Half a saw is two of these palm lengths of either barley or raisins or dates or the uh, wheat of barley and sorry, or the uh, well, I guess the, the, the flour of barley or wheat. Or they can also give it in terms of aqit, aqit, which is the dried milk. So these are the categories that usually give in zakat al-fitr. They are the same from these same categories that we give for the fidya of it'am miskin. You feed to one poor person each day, either once again, a mud, mud, which is one palm length of wheat, or half a sa', which is two of these of either raisins or dates or, uh, or uh, barley or the flour of barley and wheat, or aqit, which is dry milk. Now, can we give, uh, do we have to give a specific, or not a specific, but an individual person every single day, a different person, or can we give this all to one individual? No, you can actually give all the 30 days or each day, if you come at the end, if it's 29 or 30 days, you can give them all to one person. The condition is that they are a people who are in need. 
All right, now we're going to switch to the other category, inshallah, which are those who are capable of fasting. Now, they have a different situation. These individuals, when they break their fast because of a concession, they need to make up that fast that they have missed. It's just that this is a concession for them to fast. And those people who are capable of fasting and they uh, have the concession not to fast, they are, I've divided them into actually also a couple of categories. The first one, those individuals, it's actually a sunnah for them to take that concession and break their fast. And it's disliked for them to actually fast. Those are, one, the traveler. Even if he's not facing hardship, or even if they're not facing any hardship of traveling. Traveling in itself is a reason to break your fast. Of course, when we're talking about traveling over here, we're talking about the one that has a specific criteria, which considered a, a travel and it's a specific distance. Um, and uh, like you, know, you can review some of these things in the books of Fiqh, inshallah. But over here, that that's travel we're talking about is an individual who is traveling a certain distance. Uh, they are able to break their fast. There's sometimes a situation where a person would wake up in the morning, they have traveling plans, and they wake up, so it's like an idea of Ramadan, and their flight is, for example, at... Uh, Asr time or Dhuhr time or they're not leaving their city before Dhuhr or, or Asr time so what should they do? Uh, can they break their fast or not? The answer is yes, they can break their fast however they have to wait until they leave the limits of their town or city this is when they can break their fast but is it the preferred? No it's not in this case it's actually preferred for them to continue their fasting so that they would get out of the difference of opinion because some other scholars had prohibited for them to break their fast yes it is permissible in in the Hanbali school of thought that they can break their fast but it's preferred not to all right what if a person is traveling and so they are in a flight from one area to the next and they have started the flight for example in the evening and they know that they're going to arrive to a destination their home on the day of Ramadan, so in a day during the day while they're fasting, what should they do? It's actually mandatory for them to intend to fast. So, which means that they intend to fast, uh, make that intention from the evening. And so, when they arrive, the, the, when the Fajr enters, they're actually fasting uh, because it means that their concession or permission not to fast has been gone by their arrival. So, if they know that they're going to arrive during the day of Ramadan, then they should not be uh, fasting. All right, now the second category over here for those who are have the concession to fast, in fact, it's recommended, for, sorry, they have the concession not to fast, it's actually recommended for them not to fast, and it's disliked for them to fast, is the person who's sick. Now, there's a specific criteria for sickness over here. It's those who are going to be harmed by fasting. And what I mean by harmed by fasting, it means that two uh, Muslim doctors, uh, they would recommend or they, they, you know, they, they would say, they, they give the recommendation that these individuals, it's better for them not to fast because fasting would either result in prolonging the recovery period, which means they will take longer to recover from their sickness or it would increase their sickness. So those individuals are the ones who are, when we say that they're going to be harmed by fasting. This is, these are the ones who have the concession, actually it's recommended for them to break their fast, but with the condition that they have the recommendation of two Muslim doctors because only a Muslim can understand what it requires for a person to fast. Um, this, this is their valid testimony of individual. It requires them to know what's going on. And it requires two doctors just in case there's a difference of opinion. That being said, sometimes some people are sick. They might have some sort of sickness, but they're still able to fast. But the problem is that they have to take a specific medication that they cannot move around the clock, but they must have it in a specific time and it happens to be during the day. And if they don't take that medication, that will result into them relapsing into a disease. For them, it's actually permissible for them also to break their fast. Now, the second category that is you know, of people who are capable to fast um, and they have concession to fast um, are those who are uh, the females who are pregnant or nursing. Now, obviously, pregnant, like being pregnant or nursing is not a, a condition that requires a person to break their fast. So there's a condition that's added to it that allows them to break their fast. And this is why it will be disliked for them, uh, for the pregnant woman or the nursing woman to fast. And that condition is if they either fear for themselves when they fast or feel for their, fear for their uh, infant uh, or their non, like, you know, their unborn child yet. So it has to have associated with some sort of a fear. So if they fear for themselves or for their unborn child or for their nursing child, then it's permissible for them to break their fast and they need to make it up. Whether they are worried about themselves, they fear for themselves or their child. 
over here, if you look at the slides, I did put two categories uh, for the females who are uh, pregnant or nursing. Um, and the first one is that if they fear for themselves, which means they either fear for themselves only or they fear for themselves and their infant, the only thing they have to do is make up that fast that they have missed. But what if they only fear for their child? Like they're fine, they don't fear for themselves, but they feel for their child that them fasting might actually uh, cause some harm to their child because they're not going to be nourished well or whatever the case is. So in this case, in addition to making up that one day that they have missed, an expiation of feeding one person a day should be given by the person who is responsible for uh, spending on the child. In this case, usually it is the father of the child. Uh, so this is the only difference between uh, the person who only fears from the, for their child and the person who fears from themselves only or for themselves and the child. Uh, so in this case, you just have to feed one person uh, additionally every day that the uh, either the pregnant or the nursing female Breaks, takes that concession and breaks her fast. Uh, we'll stop here inshallah and next time we are going to be taking uh, another category and this is over here the fourth category which is the nullifiers of your fast um, and so those are uh, things that are what are the things that would invalidate your fast and there's expiations and inshallah we'll talk about that in detail. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.